Good evening. I want to welcome you to Rancho Christian Center. Wednesday night, prayer service, preaching service, encouragement service. We all uh, are glad that you would uh, join us tonight. We're doing a live stream uh, from the sanctuary, and uh, we have a faithful team of people here along with my lovely wife who will be joining me in just a little bit. But we're, we're continuing to walk down this road that Jesus told us to, to be an encouragement. Uh, I think many times as a pastor, I hear the Lord telling me to fulfill my job as an equipper. And so I, I hope that tonight uh, there's a little bit of equipping that goes on. There's a little bit of encouragement that goes on. So you're going to have to kind of track with me a little bit because I'm going to uh, bring in some friends that I'm going to talk about here. But uh, they, you're going to have to make the jump to these are spiritual voices that you may hear. These are things that may be uh, in your heart, in your mind, things that people say. But uh, I hope that it's an encouragement as we go. So I just wanted to open up in prayer. Father, tonight we're grateful to be in the house of the Lord. We're grateful for our friends and family and those who may be listening tonight, watching tonight. May you bless them, Lord, and encourage them greatly. We invite you, Holy Spirit, because without you, we are nothing. And we thank you for your presence in all that you will do tonight. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was a blessing uh, to be in the house on Sunday. We uh, spent time together as a family. If you weren't able to make that, know that you were greatly missed. We completely respect the fact that some are still working through this transition time and, and uh, either watching from home or watching here. If you happen to be in the service, you would see that we are way spread out and uh, we have families grouped together. So we're really trying to follow the protocol uh, just to keep everybody safe, but yet those that uh, have an opportunity to come to meet together. So tonight, if you're taking notes, um, I'd like you to write down faith, hope, and love. Uh, it's a famous scripture. And uh, I'm going to be uh, ending actually in that text and just keep moving along tonight because I'd really like to close our time, uh, at least the second half in prayer, and Linda will come and join me with that. So uh, if you're ready to go, you're going to, you could make your way to 1 Timothy 4, chapter 12, and you can have that ready as I open up here. I just want to say in this time when the church is facing so many challenges, a lot of people need to hang out more with three new friends. I think we all appreciate good friends in our life. And uh, some of you over the years, you've had good friends, you've had not so good friends. I know in my, in my case that's, that's happened. Uh, those that are good friends encourage me greatly, but I have to be realistic with the voices that I hear sometimes. Sometimes I, I may need to get rid of some old friends that really um, affect me on this journey called life. And imagine tonight if you could pick three friends to hang out with every day. What would their names be? What would their uh, character be like? What might you appreciate from them as they influence your life and encourage your life? And there may even be some old friends or even old roommates that I believe uh, many people may need to get rid of. I've had some roommates in my life uh, prior to being married. Uh, very glad to see the day that I could wave goodbye because I, they, they were an influence upon me, and I'm sure I was an influence upon them too, but it just didn't work out well, and there was a lot of things that went on in all of that. But uh, some of their names, uh, if you're thinking about this spiritually, could have been one of those roommates named fear or unbelief or rejection. Uh, complaining, or even anger. You know, those are just those things, those voices that you hear as you walk through life. It could even represent people that are around you, that uh, just each time you, you talk to them, there's almost an impossible situation that they're facing. Or it's almost like they're waiting for somebody to reject them. Or maybe even, uh, you know, I find myself complaining from time to time. And there's, a, there's just a place that I walk in that I, I want to go past. Especially in these times when the church is facing so many challenges, there, there, there needs to be the counselors that you have, the counselors that you become, the voices that you hear 
And, and, and that really should reflect the Word of God that's in our life. It should reflect people that are in our life and those things that they speak over us often shape us and inform us. We, we know that as parents, we're supposed to speak over our children. We're supposed to talk about the scriptures, model the scriptures, encourage the scriptures. Why? So that that kid grows up thinking, that's what I am. That's who loves me. That's what's never changing in life. That's the worth and value that I have as an individual. So when somebody comes and says, hey, come and kind of sell yourself cheap over here, they say, but I'm worth much. Uh, I'm loved much. I'm valued much. And I have to continue to walk that way. It's the same thing with people in our life. Imagine if these three friends or these group of friends that, uh, you know, could have been the roommates that you always wanted to get rid of. Imagine if they influenced your life through every day especially if they're your counselors. It could sound something like this, and see if you've heard this before. You know, all these people standing together could be saying, well, brother, I'm afraid something very bad is about to happen. And I'm not even sure that God can do anything about it. You know, you just start seeing the fear, the unbelief, the rejection. You know, uh, really, you just can't depend on anyone these days and you know, it's really making me upset and I feel like I could just go off on someone. You know, and so you've recognized that there's these people, uh, these spiritual things in your life that really want to change you and, and conform you and adapt you. And, and so uh, those of you who are Christians listening to this tonight, you know that you've been, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and he tells us to walk not in the flesh or our old nature, but to walk in the Spirit. Sometimes one of your friends might even be anger. And if you bring him with you into a situation, you may lose your opportunity to speak because anger closes the ears of people all around you. Do you ever notice that? You, 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 you're in a conversation and everything is going fine until all of a sudden it escalates to a point where voices go up, uh, tempers go up, and then now accusations come out and anger begins to control the situation. Well, everybody wants to just uh, remove themselves from that. So no matter what was supposed to be said, anger hijacks the whole conversation. And it begins to cause you to uh, react differently and respond. And, 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 and either you rise up or you run away. You know, some, one of the two is going to happen. Today there are so many voices, uh, even in society, that you hear. Hate and anger will disqualify those voices every time. If you really have something to say, it has to come out as something different than those two. And we find ourselves sometimes in social media platforms. We find ourselves sometimes even when we have our own personal pulpit, when we're talking to somebody, or even behind this pulpit. I always have to make sure that I'm not allowing the devil to disqualify me and people shutting me off just turning me off and saying, well, that's just coming out of a, a heart of anger. It's coming out of a heart of resentment or offense. And no matter what I have to say, true or false, it's hard for people to hear that. As we're in 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, you, can see, you can see Paul talking to Timothy over this very issue. And, and I want to tell you, this, this is not just a youth scripture, because I've heard it said that Timothy was over 50 years old when he's hearing this particular scripture. Uh, some of you scholars could fact check that for me. But he says in verse 12, don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. But this is where I want to start. Be an example to all believers in what you say. In this time, if we were to start out our conversations by hearing this, am I an example to all believers by what I say? In the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity? He's just saying, Timothy, you know, be an example, and then don't let anyone think less of you. Uh, another scripture, another version says, don't let anyone despise your youth. Look down upon you at whatever stage of growth that you are in. But he says, I need you to be an example to all believers. And I'm encouraging those of you who are the church, who have the answer for our generation, who have our answer to every circumstance we are in, every pestilence we are in, every uh, social issue we are in, I believe the Word of God has the truth for that. And not only that, but the truth that sets free. So as we're here tonight, 
We have to recognize God's calling me to be an example. And, and you know, I have to wrestle my, my emotions to the ground sometime and say, you will be an example for God in your love, in your faith, in the way you live, in the things you say, in your purity. And something's got to rise up to say, that's who I am. And I'm not selling myself short. I'm not going to listen to those old roommates that were just in it for themselves, but I'm in this for God. He goes on in verse 16. He says, keep a close watch. And this is 1 Timothy 4, verse 16. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. You're supposed to keep your eyes on it. You're supposed to keep every day waking up and saying, how is, how is my life and how is my teaching? You might say, well, I'm not a, a teacher like Mike Rochette. I don't preach like Pastor Tom. And you go right down the list. But you know, if you are... If you are in this life and you're a Christian, you're supposed to be discipling someone. You're supposed to be encouraging someone, blessing someone. And that's, that's all about teaching. If you're a father, if you're a mother, if you're a, a, a co-worker and you have somebody alongside of you, we're supposed to recognize, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Because remember, out of you comes uh, the, even just the river of life that's supposed to bless many. The end of that verse is, stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Right? You know, because you don't know what you're saying could lead somebody to heaven or uh, just allow somebody to keep walking on that road to hell. We all know that as Christians. I don't want to be somebody that just pushes somebody down that road. I want to be somebody that stops and, and, you know, I want to stay true to what is right for the sake of my own salvation, but also for the sake of those who hear me. And I've been guilty of saying the wrong thing and offending people. And the Holy Spirit comes later and goes, <laughs> do you know what you just did? Do you know the people that you affected? I, I mean, you know, even when I preach, sometimes I say things from this pulpit that is not correct. And I appreciate the refining of our pastoral staff and those people in my life. I appreciate my wife sitting in the front row right here saying amen. Uh -huh. And so I appreciate that when she says, you know, when you went down this road or when you started to say these things, you maybe lost everybody or maybe it wasn't very clear. And so next time, let's try to do this a little bit better. And so those are the things that I appreciate because I want to... I want to stay true to what is right for the sake of not only myself, but those who hear me. Can we say amen? If you're out there sitting on your couch, you're probably standing up praying. You're probably kneeling on a hardwood floor right now, taking this all in. I know you're a spiritual group that are uh, tuning in on Wednesday nights. But now imagine some new roommates that, that, that want to hang out with you and have something to say wherever you go. Uh, it, it could be, you know, you come into a, a place and inside and in your heart you're saying, hello, I'd like to introduce my good friend Faith and my good friend Hope and my good friend Love. And you walk in and there's three of you. It's an entourage, you know, and you're coming and, and you recognize that I can bring in anger, I can bring in disappointment, I can bring in arguing wherever I go, but what if I choose today to bring in faith and hope and love? Right? And it's a decision that I make. I'm going to be an example to the believers, and I'm going to be an example to those who are being saved. And the best way I know how to do that is to bring in faith, hope, and love. And so you might say, what does it have to do with the environment that we've been in, the messages that we've been preaching? Well, I think it's, it's just meant to encourage you that those, there's many who are out there who want to make a difference. Some people are sitting at their computers ready to write, to respond to a post. What if you responded uh, and you made a rule in your house and in your heart? Everything that I respond is going to be out of faith and hope and love. Well, what if I was that person and, and, I, and, I, and I really disciplined myself? That's a, that's a lost word in society today. But what if I disciplined myself? That's not beating myself with a stick. You know, that is, that is allowing myself to uh, take counsel and follow counsel until it produces something good in me. It's a discipline that I set in motion. I, I wake up 
you know, and, and one thing that I have to do before I go to work, I have to kiss my lovely wife. I've disciplined myself to do that because I love to do that. You know, the things that you love to do don't take any discipline. But the things that you don't love to do, that are hard to do, that's what takes a discipline. So that's what I'm talking about. So they have, everywhere you go, they have some things to say that, that could encourage others that are in this difficult time. And, you know, uh, faith might say, and, and I'm, 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 I'm reading these things, and I hope you hear a few scriptures in these, but that maybe you too can say, is that what happens when I open my mouth? Faith might say, let me remind you of all the wonderful things God has done. Uh, yep, with men, this situation is impossible. And they're standing there, and they're, they're, they're looking at the same thing you are, the same difficulty you are. But with, with God, all things are possible, faith would say. God is able to save with many or even a few. So even though we don't have a whole church full of people, we don't have a whole bucket full of money, we don't have everything figured out, I got, I got faith that believes that Jesus is going to help me in the midst of all this. So it, 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 he, he is well able to bring us through to victory. And you look over and you say, thank you, that's much better than the other roommate that I had. You know, the things that he was uh, telling me before. And then so faith isn't proud. Faith isn't puffed up. It just brings encouragement. So all of a sudden you see it different. Hope might say, don't put your hope in your finances. He's probably, hope is the more, you know, he's the more calculated and he's the more secure and he's the more anchored individual of your friends, right? There's, faith is running over here into the fire. You know, love is over here. Come on, brother, let me help you, you know. But hope is this anchor, you know. And so as we consider these friends in our life, we, we have to recognize there's the positive influence and then there's those things that are not so positive. So to recap a, a bit here, if we walk in with faith, there's things that he's going to say. If we walk in with hope, there's things that he's going to say. And hope's going to be that anchor in your life. And love's going to be that, that part of Jesus that really heals. And, but faith is going to want to just run into the fire sometimes. So uh, the last here, love might say something like this. God's love is unconditional. Because most of the time you're in a situation, they're wondering, who is God? What is God like? Is he, is he really able to forgive me? Can he, is, is what he has going to remain? Or is it going to be like some earthly things that I know that have just faded away or haven't been there for me? It's going to be something like his love never gives up. His love never loses faith. Is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love might say, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate you from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons. Neither our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or on the earth below. Can you imagine somebody going with you into a circumstance where somebody is not feeling well, somebody is in the hospital, somebody is discouraged, somebody is saying, you know, uh, we just got a bad report from the doctor, and all of a sudden love shows up and begins to say, no power in the sky above or on the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever separate be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So no matter what they're going through, you're going to go through it with Jesus. No matter what you feel, you're going to go through it with Jesus. But it took love to tell you that. Right? Love isn't static. Love is dynamic. Love is moving into every circumstance and bringing this kind of, of result with it. So I need to ask you, you know, we need to decide who do we really want as our roommates? Who are we really going to hang out with more and more as we walk through this season of the church when I think it's its greatest season. I, I, I want to be able to look at somebody and, and, and look behind them and see faith and hope and love in their life. I, I want to be an example to the believers. And so tonight I, I would just like to ask Linda to come up and join me. And what we're going to pray for is these three things in the church. We're going to ask God to continue to do what only He can do. And uh, we, although we need to pray, although we need to preach, although we need to walk out into the world, uh, there's nothing more powerful than prayer. Prayer opens the door to all your preaching. 
Prayer opens the door to all of the change in your life. And so I just wanted to spend a few moments. If you could uh, just join us in prayer, I'm going to let Linda lead us out in this time. Father, we just thank you so much for this word and this reminder, Lord, of where our hearts need to be, what our hearts need to be set on, Lord, the, the, the things that you want us to abide in and with, Lord. And so faith, hope, and love, God, yes. I just pray that you would help my own heart to uh, stay centered in that place in the midst of this time where uh, storms are raging about us and, and division can come. Lord, we declare, God, in the midst of the storm that you are with yes. us. God, yes, you yes. are with us and you are not shaken by these things. And, and God, you said in your word that if we had faith as a mustard mm. seed, God, we could say to this mountain, yes, move yes. from here to there and it would be done. And that nothing would be impossible because God, it's not about the amount of faith that we can somehow drum up, mm -hmm. but God, it's who we have our faith in. And so, Lord, we put our faith in you and we believe you are who you say you are. Yes, God, you are yes. God who can do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask or even think mm. God and so this is who you are Lord we set our eyes upon you God there is nothing even difficult for you God and so we put our trust in you Jesus yes, thank Jesus. you for being the anchor yes. Lord in our lives you are our hope God you are our hope thank you Jesus father tonight there's people that you love so much right on the other side of the screen. People I know that are being stirred up in their spirit. They're saying, I wanna make a difference. I wanna, I wanna hear that word from Paul to Timothy, to be an example to the believers. And Lord, we pray right now over every family that's out there, over every young person, over every single person. We pray that your faith would begin to jump off the pages of the Bible that as they read it, they wouldn't say, this is what I'm reading, this is what I'm living. And it would stir them up and it would encourage them every day. Lord, I, I just want to pray with Linda and we want to break off discouragement. Yes. We want to tell those old roommates that they just have to go when they want to come in with rejection or they want to come in with complaining or they want to come in with anger just because of the circumstance and the pain that we all feel. And so, Father, we are asking that you would help us. Yes. You'd help us in this time, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes, and Father, we just want to even um, lay hands on our eyes. And, and yes, God, even Jesus. as people yes. who are maybe yes. watching are doing that, God, we, we pray like Elisha did for his servant, mm -hmm. God, that our eyes would be open to see that there are more who are for us, yes. who are with yes. us than those yes. that are against us, God. You say in your word, you are for us. You are on our side. Yes. And so, God, yes. we take comfort in that. And we ask that our eyes would be open to see, Lord that you are so much greater, God. You are so much greater that the God who created the universe yes. and keeps all things flowing together so perfectly, God, that if the, you can do that in the universe, then surely, God, if you care for the sparrow, God, you can care for us. And so, Lord, we again... We set our eyes upon you. I thank you, God, that you are a God who loves us. You are a mighty, awesome, powerful God. Yes, and yet, yes. in all of that, you have chosen to love us. And so, God, um, I pray that again, even when we are in contact with one another, Lord Jesus, that we would be reminded of what you have given us. Lord, freely we have received, that we would freely give this love, God to everyone that we come into contact with, God. And yes, would their Jesus. lives be affected? Would they not be the same, Lord? And so continue, God, to cause our eyes to be set upon you. Yes, Thank Lord you, Jesus. Jesus. Yes. You know, so tonight, just as we come to the end of our time, let this be a part of your own prayer. There's a lot of people wanting to make a difference today. And I think the church has the greatest opportunity to, to be the difference, to bring the difference with them into every circumstance. I need to decide who I really want as my roommate. 
I have to be willing to bring an eviction notice to fear when fear comes and wants to sit down on my couch. You might be looking to the left or the right of you tonight and realizing there's been some roommates that, have, that are in my house, are in my apartment, that just shouldn't be there. There's been some roommates that have been harassing my wife, been harassing my kids, have been distracting me. And, and uh, I want to encourage you, know, you in a spiritual way to rise up and fight the right fight and, and, and put your hands to this. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, where the text comes from, tonight it says, tell, it tells us, and now abide. Then this is in the New King James, if you're reading that. Now abide means now live. Take your residence to this location. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Because we know Jesus is love and he came with such a powerful message for us. So as Christians, let's set our heart on to walk with faith, hope, and love. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about it just what it looks like. I want to encourage you to just start doing it. Uh, in our early marriage days, I just tried to be a good husband, and, but I needed Linda to help me. I needed her to guide me and encourage me and, 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 and uh, you know, cheer me on when I was not doing well. It's the same thing with the Lord. He wants to encourage us as his bride. He wants to cheer us on, and uh, you'll hear his voice. Can I just say to you, encourage you to fight for relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. Fight for them. Relationships are hard work at every level. And, um, you know, especially here, because that's the thing the devil wants to separate the most, because mm -hmm. it's a picture of Christ's love for his church. And it's the yeah. same way. As we love one another, that's how, right? That's how the world is going to know we're his disciples. And so let's um, really work hard at, at our relationships with one another and love one another. Um, it's more important than being right. Amen. And so um, anyways, I just want to encourage you with that. We love you. And um, we're praying that in the midst of everything that's going on, you're going to stand. You're going to stand strong. Mm -hmm. I believe that even as Peter walked on the water in the midst of everything that's going on. You're going to walk on the water as your eyes are set on Jesus and not on the wind and yeah. the waves that are all around you, but your eyes are set on Jesus. You're going to walk on the water. Amen. Amen. I don't bring her with me too often because she starts preaching Sorry. and then I'm going to have to sit down. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of our time. And I, uh, I got to tell you, I'm so grateful for my wife. If you're sitting there with your wife, could you just reach over and say, I thank God for you. Because, you know, um, or if you're not yet married, could you say, God, could you give me a, a great wife and a great husband that will always encourage me in the Lord and help me walk close to you? So the Lord bless you tonight. Uh, we, we send blessings from our senior pastor. We send blessings from the church, the leadership here. We, if we could just stand in your home for a moment and bless you, we would do it. And so we pray this has been a, a little bit of an encouragement to your Wednesday evening. So the Lord bless you. And, uh, you know, go out and start looking for some new roommates because I know God wants to allow that to move in to encourage you this week. So the Lord bless you and thank you for spending.